Yeah, so good evening. Uh, thank you very much for coming to this meeting of the uh, Young Professionals Network. You're all very welcome to the Institute. Um, my name is Max. I'll be, I'm the uh, Energy Policy Researcher here at the Institute, and I'll be, have the privilege of, of chairing tonight's event where we are uh, joined by Laura Houston. Um, just a few matters of housekeeping before we get started. Uh, could I just ask you to just turn off, uh, well, well, uh, put your mobile phones on silent. Do feel free to tweet, of course. And, uh, um, and uh, if, you, uh, uh, if you want to be informed about future events, if you're not on the mailing list or if you know somebody that would be interested in joining the Young Professionals Network, we're always looking for new members. And uh, as you see, it's, it's a very informal, uh, nice way of networking, getting together and, and of course, uh, having some interesting speakers uh, uh, talk about a variety of, of subjects. Uh, and if, if you know somebody that might like to join, uh, you can email our chair, Keen McCarthy, uh, keen.mccarthy at iea.com. Um, right, I suppose uh, that's, that's, that's all the, the housekeeping for now. Uh, um, as you, I'm, I'm sure you're aware that in, in, in the global governance structure of, of you know, decarbonization of climate change uh, mitigation and adaptation we're increasingly moving towards the sort of bottom bottom up approach uh, replacing the, the top down approach and in, in that context the the importance of sustainable finance I suppose has has been has been recognized more and more so that is expi explicitly mentioned in the in the important you know Paris agreement which which we which was concluded in 2015 in December and of course the EU has also uh, established a special task force uh, quite recently as the proposed legislation uh, towards 2030 is also moving towards a more bottom-up approach. So uh, in that context, of course, we're, we're very glad to have with us Laura Houston, uh, who's the uh, Director of Sustainable Finance with uh, Sustainable Nation Ireland, uh, which is a non-for-profit non uh, organization uh, hoping to promote Ireland as a financial uh, center for uh, green finance. And... Uh, well, uh, all that's left for me to do is, I suppose, to ask you to uh, give Laura a very warm welcome, and we look forward to your presentation. Okay, thanks for the lovely words, Max. Um, I might start uh, on me, so just give you a bit of background on me. So, um, my background is I did <coughs> law in college, and then strangely I, enough, I went on to do accounting and tax. Um, so I trained in Arthur Anderson, which was subsequently taken over by KPMG. And I basically have been there for uh, 20 years up until last summer. Um, I wasn't there the whole time. I did escape for five years. I went traveling for a year to Australia. And I went into Airtricity, the Airtricity Group, um, before it was acquired by SSE. And I was working there for four years up until uh, the sale in 2008. Um, and I was the head of tax there. And so Airtricity was an Irish headquartered, it had started out in the late uh, 90s, early 2000s, and um, literally in someone's office. It started out in someone's uh, spare room. It started out there, um, and they were literally walking the fields, <coughs> seeing where it was windy. Um, and it went on to become a, a Irish headquartered internationally and globally successful wind farm group that spanned the entire value chain from development of wind farms, uh, bringing them through construction into operation, holding them long term and supplying the electricity to end customers through supply companies that they would set up. So hugely successful, um, Irish headquartered uh, success story and uh, the company, the group was sold for 1.8 billion in 2008. And after that, I kind of thought about what I wanted to do, and I went back to KPMG, where I went into back to the, the partner that had interviewed me when I came in uh, previously, and uh, I uh, continued to work in the renewable energy in the renewable energy team in KPMG, mostly focused on transaction structuring, so uh, and mostly in the renewable energy sector, so fairly specific, um, and the transaction structuring I'll be doing would be like acquisitions and disposals and joint ventures, there's a lot of that in the wind farm sector, um, and uh, also as, as Irish headquartered uh, or uh, companies or funds were uh, expanding into new countries, there's a lot of structuring that needs to be done around that, so I'd kind of be working on all that stuff. And while I was working there, I did move beyond wind farms, thankfully. Um, and I would have seen, I suppose, people start to work on solar projects, 
we started to see energy efficiency financing coming across the, the way. I was lucky enough to work on Open Hydro Group, who were developing a new tidal turbine technology. Um, so, you know, I kind of had a, quite a, a broad uh, a broad <coughs> range of clients. Um, but uh, none of that explains how I got into green finance, which I'm currently in. So how did I get into green finance? It was around this time last year. So Sustainable Nation came to KPMG, and uh, KPMG is a great supporter of Sustainable Nation, and they asked KPMG to do a report on the global green finance landscape post the Paris Agreement and Ireland's place within it. So what was Ireland's green finance credentials, if any? We knew we had some, but you know, it's like literally quantifying them and figuring out what we had. Um, so I suppose I did that report, and I'll kind of discuss <coughs> later on about where, what, where I got to with that report. But um, I guess the, the one thing it made me realise was that I'd actually been working in green finance for 15 years. I just had never called it that. <coughs> um, so I did the report, we presented it to the government, uh, the Department of Finance, uh, at the end of June last year, and I, I left KPMG the following day and I joined Sustainable Nation, and I've been working to progress the initiative that kind of fell out of that report ever since, Finance Green Ireland. Um, so that's me. That's my background, and I might just go on and before we start, get into anything else, go through a few definitions. So green and sustainable finance, it's a high growth emerging international financial services sector. So if you want to compare it to something, it's like aircraft leasing, except in fact the opportunity in the market is even bigger. So it's a niche sector within the international financial services sector. Um, Green finance, at its absolute simplest, it's about the finance and the financial services to support that, that will contribute to tackling climate change. So we need to, uh, we need to invest in infrastructure and in innovation if we're going to uh, tackle climate change and uh, transition to a low carbon resource efficient economy. And that's what green finance is about. Sustainable finance is a slightly broader definition, so it includes the finance around climate change, but it's broader because it's really linked to the UN Sustainable Development Goals. So, if you think there are definitions, um, I suppose when you come to the financial sector, and it's no more than when you speak to anyone, everyone always wants to know, okay, what's this mean for me? What are the opportunities here for me? So, I, I do think that we, when speaking to the financial sector, uh, talking about polar bears or uh, going vegan or um, or tree hugging, etc. That's that's not going to move the financial sector. You need to actually show them the risks and opportunities for them, the risks and opportunities for our economies, and the risks and opportunities for the financial se sector in particular, because that's how people will engage. And I think that's what we're really seeing now: that the financial services sector see green finance as a business opportunity. And um, they're not, you know, no one's. You know, there, is, there are other ancillary um, aspects, I suppose, that are driving it, but I do think that it's, you know, the, the profit motive, I think, motivates everyone. So I think that's really the way to engage the financial sector. So the context for green finance and why it is suddenly such a, a high growth sector, it really comes back to the Paris Agreement and the UN Sustainable Development Goals back in 2015. So, you know, everyone is probably in the room is probably familiar enough with those um, huge, you know, really ambitious targets to really change the way that we, we live in the world and ensure that we have more of a sustainable existence and sustainable development going forward. Um, but none of that is going to be achieved without money. So money is key and they recognised that at the time of signing those agreements. And what you see since then, so those agreements set out the real economy targets, I suppose, as you say, but since then what you see is um, multilateral and international organisation, one after the other, setting up green finance groups, setting up sustainable finance initiatives, setting out policy recommendations, and we're, you can literally list them all, the UN, the OECD, the G20, the G7, and most recently the EU. So you kind of see at that multilateral level all these policy documents and policy recommendations going on, but how are we going to shift money towards green infrastructure and green innovation? Because the money is there, you just need to shift it from, I suppose, the brown stuff to the green stuff. Um, so you do have all those recommendations coming out, and then you see it moving down to the national level, so China coming out with policies and implementing things fairly quickly, um, and all the countries then taking, uh, taking action and encouraging green finance. And then you come down to the national level, and what you're really seeing is, um, is national financial centres really taking up the gauntlet on green finance and setting up their own initiatives. So there's about 100 financial centres in the world, 
20 of them now have green and sustainable financial centre initiatives, and that's in the past two years. So it's just an indication of how you know, everyone is seeing this as an opportunity. Why are they seeing it as an opportunity? It's because the numbers are so big. You're talking about that we need 90 trillion to 2030. 90 trillion needs to be invested if we're going to uh, achieve, keep within our climate change targets and achieve the UN Sustainable Development Goals. In Ireland, they're saying it's 40 billion. So, um, and that's probably a really low estimate. I think there's new estimates currently being worked on. So that is just a huge amount of money. The opportunity is huge. If you think about all the bonds, equities, funds, all the financial services um, players that are going to be moving that money from one place to the other and ensuring there are safeguards around where it's going invested, et cetera, et cetera, and making sure that the returns are coming back. There is a huge financial services opportunity. And that is part of the reason that the national financial centres are all setting up green finance initiatives. I do think the other part of it is that the financial centres see this as an opportunity after, um, after the crash, after the crisis, to you know, make a contribution and to show how finance is connected to the real economy. Because I think there is a bit of a missing link there at the moment and has been over time. It's been increasing over time that there are these people in the financial centres in London or wherever and they're doing crazy things with derivatives and securitisations and things that nobody on the street understands. And actually, finance for sustainable infrastructure is quite a nice thing to explain and quite easy to explain. It's literally wind farms, most renewable energy, like take renewable energy for a start, it's capital intensive. You need the money up front. It's like buying a house. So, um, and the, the, the cash profile is quite nice then because you buy your house, you buy your wind farm, you invest, you build your wind farm. And then your fuel to power it is free. So all you have is your own O&M costs and various other costs go, that go through. But it's quite a nice profile. And you can, it's, it's, it's quite an interesting um, way to explain to people, listen, this is how the financial services sector benefits us, benefits the real economy. That wind farm wouldn't get built unless we had the finance to, to build it. And you need the financial se services sector in between to connect the two. So the people with the money and the wind farm on the ground. So I do think there's part of that that is why the financial centres are stepping up and just that it's their contribution. Everyone is making contribution towards climate change and this is a real opportunity for the, the financial sector to make a real significant contribution towards climate change. So in terms of green finance initiatives themselves, as I said, there's about 20 of them globally. Um, it usually comes from two parts. It kind of has to be public and private. So it has to be the national governments want to ensure that their financial centres are rising to the challenge and are ensuring that, I suppose, all these policy recommendations that are coming down from the EU or whatever, that their national financial services sector are embracing them and pushing them forward. Um, and also, the key market players in your, in your country needs to come together um, and themselves to kind of develop sustainability and see it as a business opportunity. And both of those are present for our Finance Green Ireland initiative, which I'll come on to now in a minute, and is, is what has led to us um, setting it up. Um, just as supposed to talk about sustainable finance more specifically, and give you a few specific examples. So if you look, this, these are the dimensions of a sustainable financial centre. And in fact, they're probably the dimensions of any financial centre, full stop. But sustainability and sustainable finance means a slightly different thing to every single one. And you need to be talking slightly different whenever you're talking to every different group, because they don't necessarily all come together very much. So if you're talking to banks, you're talking about um, green bonds, you're talking about the op business opportunity that is lending to renewable energy projects, or lending to sustainable commercial real estate retrofits, or that lend, you know, energy efficient mortgages lending. Um, but you're also talking to them about, about risks. So if they're making loans to small SMEs that are based down in, in a, a town that's liable, prone to flooding, are they taking that into account when they're making their loan? Because if they're making a loan to a business that is going to be flooded out of it repeatedly every year for the next whatever years, it may have to close down. So are they factoring in these risks? So it's, it's opportunity and risk all the time. Um, but that's what it means from a banking perspective. From a debt capital markets perspective, the, the main game in town is green bonds. I don't know if you're familiar with bonds generally, but so it's just um, basically that you're a company going to the capital markets and raising debt on it, basically. And all green bonds are, are bonds that raise money that are put to a green use. So they're exactly the same as bonds, any vanilla bond in any other way. It's just that there is this framework, which is both a use of proceeds and a reporting framework to verify that money is actually used for a green 
um, to, for green uses. So, and just to be really clear, green means right across the, the um, sustainability sector. So, sector, so it could be uh, renewable energy, but it could be waste, it could be water, transport, agriculture. You know, it's kind of thinking that bigger, the bigger picture. It could also be um, debt that's being raised for energy efficiency products by a product manufacturer. So green bonds are really the, the main game in town. And the opportunities there from an Irish perspective are really, you know, around our Irish stock exchange. So you're in ex Dublin, that considering whether we can become the number one location in the world for green bonds. We're not at the moment. We're number one location in the world for listing bonds full stop, which is unbelievable. But we're not number one in the world for listing green bonds, Luxembourg is. So, you know, that that would be the kind of things we'll be talking to debt capital markets, equity capital markets. Um, is uh, there you'd be thinking about green equities and those are companies that are producing products or services or developing projects infrastructure projects that are um, sustainable and generally if there's a certain percentage of their revenues or um, that are derived from the sale of green in quotation mark uh, uses then they would be regarded as green equities there's issues for the insurance sector you'd be thinking of catastrophe bonds you'd be thinking of the insurance sector both as a carrier of risk so as, as insuring uh, risks, but also as an investor, because the insurance sector is such a huge investor. They can you know, really make a difference if the insurance, the insurance sector decides to invest all its insurance policy proceeds that it mines and, um, until it has to pay them out. If it decides to invest all that money in uh, climate change uh, actions, that would make a real difference globally. You know, so the insurance sector is an important role to play. Investment is really important there, and you'd be thinking about how people factor um, environmental, social, and governance factors into their investment making decisions. Um, ideas, uh, examples there would be green infrastructure funds. So just plain uh, infrastructure funds, but it's climate aligned infrastructure that you're talking about. Um, and another example would be the more traditional funds, so use its funds, but that they just have a green strategy. Um, so that could be that they invest all across the water value chain because they see that water is going to be a really uh, limited resource going forward and they think that there's real growth opportunities in stocks in that area. Um, uh, then there's, you, you can literally do that all the way around, but really important on this diagram I think is like, don't forget policy and public finance. So policy can really set, public finance can really set the lead and our, 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 the, ISIF, our, the Irish Sovereign Wealth Fund is really strong on this and really strong in their investments and the things they're doing um, and really showing the, showing the path and leading the way in terms of this is, this is responsible investment, this is a good way to invest by incorporating ESG um, and professional services firms, so they're kind of down the line as well but they'd be advising companies and investors on how to invest, how to develop their, their, um, their activities and then they'd be auditing and reporting on it or advising from a legal perspective or advising from a tax perspective. So it's like keeping all these little subsectors. It's nearly you have to figure out, okay, what are all these subsectors interested in, and then how do you speak directly to them? Because not the same the same topic. If you talk about uh, energy efficient mortgages to the insurance guys, they're not going to want to listen to it. Or you know, you could you could kind of take that example everywhere. So that in order to kind of get finance green in Ireland, in order to get any green finance initiative together, you nearly need to bring all those people along with you and speak, speak to them, the risks and opportunities for them specifically. So this is our initiative, and this is like, I suppose, where I came into Sustainable Nation. So um, we have two aims with Finance Green Ireland. One is we have amazing green finance credentials. We want to promote those abroad to get more of the same. So this initiative is about jobs and economic growth for Ireland. That's all it's about. And so if we can tell people abroad what our green finance credentials are, we're hoping to get more of it. And we have some really special green finance credentials that come on to now. Um, the second thing, though, is let's not forget our domestic decarbonisation targets. So public sector money is not going to fund, it's globally recognised that public sector money in any country is only going to fund 10 to 15% of what you need to invest in infrastructure and innovation to achieve your climate change and decarbonisation targets. So private capital is vitally important. How do you get the pri private capital is looking for these investments? Private capital doesn't want to put its money in a bank at 0% or minus at the moment. Private capital is actively looking for these climate aligned investments, climate aligned long term investments, um, but they need the right policy and regulatory certainty so they can make their investment decisions and know that they're making it and that policy won't change in the future and impact on their returns. So we kind of advocate for policy and regulatory certainty in that area. 
Um, so they're the two things that we do. But really importantly, when, we, when I went to look at all the numbers, I suppose, I, like I started out totally fresh. I didn't, I didn't realise I'd been working in green finance. You know, I really had to kind of go, okay, what is green finance? And when you went and looked at the numbers and looked at what was in Ireland, because we're so amazing at, at, at international financial services generally, we have a lot going on. So we have four billion of just traditional funds, so uses funds with a green strategy that are domiciled or managed here. We have six billion of green equities. That's mainly on the Irish Stock Exchange. That's mainly Kingspan and Green Coat Renewables, but it's six billion, you know, it kind of adds up nicely. And we have 11 billion of listed green bonds. They're actually climate aligned bonds, but um, they're a type of, of green bond on the Irish Stock Exchange as well. But what's actually really special about us is um, the seven billion that's in green infrastructure funds. I'll tell you why now. So, um, the green infrastructure st fund story is really interesting because it goes back to Airtricity, the company I made at the start. So what Air mentioned at the start, so what Airtricity realised, um, I suppose, over the span of its development was that uh, renewable energy and wind farms and similarly solar, any kind of renewable energy, it's all about the upfront capital. It's all about the financing. Um, and because they weren't a utility, most of the companies at that time that were developing renewable projects globally were utilities. They had huge cash balance sheets. They weren't short of money. They were going out and they were able to finance it off their balance sheet. Airtricity didn't. It was going out initially. It was really um, going out. There wasn't even a feed-in tariff for the first wind farms they built, um, and it actually raised the money through partnerships. They were called uh, equipment partnerships at the time, um, and it continued in that vein. It was really innovative about how it got money. It always got the maximum project finance it could get, but on top of that. It, it went further. So when they were getting a tariff from the national utility that they didn't like for selling their power or that they thought wasn't enough, they said, fine, we'll set up a supply company and we'll, we'll find our own customers and we'll supply directly to them because that would mean we'll be able to retain more of the price that we sell to them than otherwise we would have been able to retain, which makes our business as a whole viable. Similarly, they did really interesting things around mezzanine debt and they did just loads of really, really innovative things from a corporate finance perspective. And what you found then was there was this real, there was this cluster of talent in our trusty, renewable energy finance talent, um, that since then has gone on and has spread out into different companies. And what you saw is that those, and it wasn't just in our trusty, it was also in Board Gosh and it was also in ESBI. And what you saw was those, those initially who were renewable energy developers becoming renewable energy infrastructure fund managers which is back to that point that it was all, they realised it was all about the money and so you need to be out raising money all the time um, and then you could, you could kind of manage everything else. So in 2008, when the largest uh, asset manager in the world, BlackRock Asset Management, went out looking for a renewable energy platform, they decided they need to get into renewable energy, this was the way the world was going, they wanted to be able to offer these investment opportunities to their customers, their clients, uh, they looked around the world and they picked a team out of Dublin. So the NTR team, who had, some of whom had come from Airtricity, and NTR was originally a an, an, uh, shareholder in Airtricity. They took Jim Barry and his team, uh, Rory O'Connor, Teresa Flynn, and they based their renewable energy platform in Dublin around them. That is just such an amazing story. And that's down to the renewable energy finance talent that we had here. And what you see, and it's not dissimilar to the aircraft leasing story with GPA, what you see is more of those stories and of those people going into different companies and just spreading their knowledge and we have a really interesting renewable energy finance talent cluster here and because of that we have a brilliant professional our professional services firms in ireland are experienced with managing green asset management so i was sitting in kpmg but i was working on projects in mexico in south africa um, and often i'd be working with my kpmg colleagues but because south africa there never had been a wind farm built before so you know the way when you're kind of talking through the issues They'd be going through the same issues we went through a couple of years previously. So you kind of be bringing them along the journey. Um, and if you have the fund managers in Ireland, you have the brains and you have the decision makers behind the fund. And then there's loads more economic growth, loads more jobs out of that. When you have those people here, it is really key. Um, so I think our three credentials are we've this renewable energy finance talent cluster, we've professional services firms who are just brilliant. And that's it's not just KPMG, it's across the whole uh, Account, you know, the big four and your legal firm, <coughs> they're experienced with dealing with green asset management. And then we are just amazing at international financial services. So as I mentioned, we're first in the world for bond listings. I just think that's astounding. We're such a small country and um, we're number one in the world. We're number one in the world for listed funds. And um, we're fourth largest exporter of financial services in Europe. 
we just have amazing uh, credentials around international financial services and it's even more amazing when you think that it's only in the last 30 years that we have a financial services sector. So um, I do think we have a lot to sell, we have a lot to sell abroad in terms of our green finance credentials and we just have to get out there and start shouting about it. And so for that reason we put together the National Committee for Finance Green Ireland, so Sustainable Nation Ireland has developed the plan and what we're going to do, how we're going to promote this, how we'll go about it. But you need champions from all those dimensions of the, of the financial centre that we looked at. You need champions from a domestic bank, from an international bank, from a fund service provider, from a fund manager. You know, you need all of those. And then you need the public sector on board. You need the Department of Finance there. You need the Department of Climate Action. You need all these parties in order to really advance um, the purpose of Finance Green Ireland. Um, and really the committee members are there to kind of say, OK, that's a good plan. That's, you know, no, we should do this, we should do that, the other but also they're there to be champions for their sector. Because if we want to make a real difference with green and sustainable finance, everybody needs to act on it. It's not something that someone needs to hold to themselves. The opportunity is so huge. It's 90 trillion, that's the figure everyone re refers to. It's just huge beyond reason. Even the, the financial centre initiatives themselves don't say they're in competition, they actually say we all need to collaborate. So we'd be collaborating with Luxembourg, we'd be collaborating with London Green Finance Initiative. Um, and it's, it's because of that. It's, you know, the opportunity is huge and we all need to be at least facing in the same direction, at least from an Irish perspective, because we have loads to offer and we just need to get the word out there. That's it on Finance Green Ireland. I'm just going to give you a little word on Sustainable Nation Ireland. Am I out of time yet? Oh, no, please go. No? Um, so this is Sustainable Nation Ireland. Um, we are just, we're really interesting. So. It was established mid-2015, so we kind of are a, a, a startup, not-for-profit, nearly still, but we have really interesting things going on. We have two pillars, sustainable business and sustainable finance. Um, but really, who we are, everything, and some, sometimes people say, oh, why, how are you doing that? So Finance Green Ireland is promoting Ireland internationally. So why do you have an accelerator program for climate-aligned startups? Because that's totally different companies and totally different you know, sectors, and what's all that about? Everything that we do is linked by the fact that we recognise there is a risk with the transition to a low carbon economy. We absolutely recognise that. Loads of people are talking about the risks. There is also an opportunity and there is a business opportunity and an economic opportunity for Ireland's companies and for Ireland. And we want to highlight the opportunities. Um, so everything that we do is linked by that. We, we, any of our initiatives are around the fact that we see a job, an opportunity for jobs and for economic growth for Ireland and we want to do something to raise awareness of that and get everyone on the same page and at least we're all trying to do something in that in that area um, so our network is interesting we are, we're supported by the private sector and the public sector um, the, we have a role under government's IFS 2020 strategy in relation to our sustainable finance activities and we also have supportive government um, under the national mitigation plan we have a, 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 a role under that in relation to the year of sustainable business and kind of raising awareness of that uh, sustainability through that. Um, and then we have private sector members, some of whom just do support us because of the business opportunities, some support us because they think they'll get more deal flow through the network that we bring together, because we bring together very cross-sectoral networks. Um, but some of us, some of them just actually think, okay, this is great for Ireland, let's just support this. This, you know, there could be more jobs in this for instance, somewhere along the line. Um, so yeah, we have, a, we have a really interesting network. What do we do? So we had a couple of um, articles in the Irish Independent there recently enough about green finance. And I got a couple of calls afterwards saying, I'm looking for finance. Uh, can you give me some of your green finance? So we don't provide money. Uh, neither do we do consulting. We don't do consulting advice. What we do is we connect, we support and we promote. So we're really about the network around, around raising awareness, raising skills, making connections and um, so that kind of gives you an idea of us uh, who we connect who we support and how we promote them and um, i won't talk any more about sustainable finance so i have two initiatives finance green ireland and sip ireland and um, sip ireland is about promoting responsible investment generally in ireland and um, under sustainable business we have a number of different initiatives um, and uh, most of them are around climate aligned innovation so around encouraging Irish entrepreneurs who have climate aligned ideas and solutions and products 
and encouraging them and supporting them in going global with it, if the idea is good, obviously, but encouraging them through, so everyone kind of knows startup accelerators for fintech and all that kind of thing. This is just a sectoral focus, so it's startup um, accelerator for um, capitalized activities. And I might just give you, before I go finish, I'll give you just an example of one of these, it's really interesting. So we kind of support companies at various different stages with various different programs, whether they're at the idea stage, whether they're scaling or growth, or whether they're mature, and we're really supporting our activities there by uh, Climate Kick, which is the EU's knowledge innovation community for climate. Um, they get a rising 2020 funding, and we run a few programs for them where they're Irish hub. Um, so if I just finish, I'm giving you some examples of climate aligned innovation that are very interesting. So Hexafly, they have um, a big warehouse in Ashburn, and they're breeding soldier flies, uh, black soldier flies, which sounds lovely, sounds like a horror, a horror story. <laughs> but they, they, the, the challenge, the global challenge they are solving is there's a global shortage of fish food for farmed fish, and the soldier fly is is fish food basically. But it's more interesting than that because they actually, um, as part of their process. They, they get fish food, but they actually release three other um, products that they can then sell. One of them in oil, one of them in protein, one of them in chitin. So they're just really interesting. It's a real example of a circular, uh, a circular economy solution. Not one bit is, is wasted, basically. Um, and they're solving a global problem. And the innovation is coming from Ireland in the headquarters here. Um, Mimergy is another really interesting one. So waste tires globally are a huge problem. And they have come up with a process that breaks down waste tires into four different components, one of which is hugely valuable, carbon black, which generally goes into anything computery and black that you see around place, and it's hugely valuable. Um, but again, a circular economy example, really interesting. Irish headquartered, regional, they're based, um, where are they based? They're in Kells. No, nope, they're in Longford. Um, so, you know, another really interesting example, and that's an example of the type of company that comes through our accelerator program and that we support through that.